get on with it, suck it up, or it was much harder back in my day. These are some of the things that healthcare professionals hear on a regular basis. Unfortunately, there is a prevalent attitude in medicine that doctors have a duty of care to patients only and not to their colleagues or themselves. This culture is not only a disservice to the healthcare professionals, but it usually has the opposite of the intended effect on patient care. To better serve patients and themselves, doctors need to take a life lesson from the airline industry. In the case of cabin pressure emergency, put your own mask on first before assisting others. Medicine has always been stressful and demanding, but there's never been a more critical time to support mental health and well-being than during the global pandemic. Hey guys, Jazz here and welcome to today's video. So firstly, what is burnout? Burnout has been described as a syndrome of emotional exhaustion, depersonalization, and a sense of low personal accomplishment that leads to decreased effectiveness at work. Now, burnout is known to have five different stages. Number one is the honeymoon phase. At this stage, there are no signs of burnout. Instead, you are full of enthusiasm, commitment, and enjoy your work. Number two, onset of stress. So you progress onto this next stage, and basically you start to find that some days at work are slightly more stressful than others. You lack time for your personal needs, and you also start seeing your friends and family a bit less. You might start to experience an inability to focus, headaches, anxiety, and changes to appetite as well as possible elevation in your blood pressure. Number three is chronic stress. Frequent experiences of high level stresses lead to this stage of chronic stress. As a result, your problem solving skills and performances decrease further. And at this point, you start feeling like you're losing control. Your efforts at work don't seem to yield the same results as they did previously. Then to avoid facing the pressure of your tasks, you might start to procrastinate. You also might not be praised for your efforts at work or even acknowledged, which can build up a sense of incompetence and failure. Number four is burnout. So this stage is burnout itself. Not addressing the previous stages or the symptoms that you were experiencing can result in critical exhaustion, which can make it difficult to perform your tasks at work. The continuous sense of failure and powerlessness eventually leads to the feeling of despair and disillusionment. You don't see a way out of the circumstances and become indifferent to your work. In this stage also, the physical symptoms may also start to intensify. Number five is habitual burnout. This is when you don't manage to recover from burnout and the state and the symptoms start to become a part of your life. Attempts to bring yourself back to normal are now more challenging than ever. Apart from just affecting your career, it may reflect in other parts of your personal life, including your relationship. Now, being in a highly demanding profession such as medicine, you're already going to be at a high risk of burning out. But contributing factors to burnout include the following. Number one, a lack of control. An inability to influence factors that affect your job, such as your schedule, your assignments, or your workload, would lead to job burnout. And so could a lack of resources needed to perform your job. Number two, unclear work expectation. If you're unclear about the degree of authority you have or what your supervisors or other colleagues expect from you, you're unlikely to feel comfortable at work. Number three, dysfunctional workplace dynamic. Now this could be from experiencing workplace bullying or being undermined by supervisors or colleagues or even having a supervisor that micromanages all of your work. All of these things obviously could contribute to workplace stress. Number four, extremes of an activity. When a job is either monotonous or chaotic, you need constant energy to remain focused, which can then lead to fatigue and workplace burnout. Number five, lack of social support. If you feel isolated in your workplace or in your social life, you're naturally gonna feel more stressed. Number six, Work-life imbalance. If work takes up so much of your effort and time that you don't have energy to spend with your friends and family, chances are you'll burn out quicker. Now, unfortunately, certain stresses are ingrained into certain workplaces and the culture within that workplace. And changing something like that is going to take a long time. But there are a few things you could consider to try and improve will maintain your emotional health. Number one, help and support your colleagues. Unfortunately, there are still a lot of clinicians within the hospitals that pride themselves on the fact that, you know, back in the day, work used to be way harder than it is now. But you know what? Who cares? Nobody should have to deal with an unsupportive and difficult workplace. Number two, try and take regular annual leave. Now, I know this can be difficult because of rostering issues and staffing and all those other problems that everyone has to deal with. And then also being at the mercy of the medical admin. But 
try and get your annual leave request in early every year to try and lock in some time off. You might not even know where you want to go, but that's something that you can sort out later. Just get the time off and then worry about it later. Number three, maintain a social life. Now I know sometimes after a hard day at work, all you want to do is go and lie in the fetal position on your sofa, but try and go out, see your family and friends and just refresh your mind. Number four, ensure that you have a good support network. Having people around you can chat to and ask for advice from makes a world of difference. And always try and debrief after significant events at work. Number five, make an effort to sleep well, exercise and try and eat the best that you can. Number six, lastly know that there is help out there if you need it. Whether that's seeing your GP regularly or making some appointments with a psychologist or even reaching out to great organizations like Beyond Blue. Just know that there is help out there for you. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you're new. Look after yourself and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.